I walked into the room to Patrick Audio. Vasily, greetings. Thank you for inviting me. You know, before we recorded this report, I listened to some songs and I'll say this. Yours is one of the few rooms that agreed to play Rammstein because in the neighboring room they told me, no, we won't play that. Here we uh, only demonstrate vocal instrumental compositions. Um, Rammstein won't sound right um, here. For that you need a specially prepared room. But here the guys immediately said, whatever you want, we'll play it for you. And indeed, the system sounds uh, very interesting, even though it seems like there aren't that many components here. But this thing doesn't count. It's a separate speaker. All of this costs 17 million. And in the back, accordingly, just like a theater begins with the code check. A proper high-end stereo system begins with the power supply. And as for how all of that is set up back there, we'll take a look at it a bit later. For now, I want to ask a couple of questions. Vasily, tell us, why should we spend 17 million korot on your system instead of putting together separate amplifiers or sources? setting everything up ourselves, monoblocks, uh, preamps, uh, DACs. In general, I believe that if the system is of the highest possible level, then everything should be separate. At least that's always how I try to build it. And at home I have two power amps, a preamp, a DAC, a streamer and a power distributor. In what? I um, completely agree with you, basically. If you want to do this for your soul, if you're a music lover or audiophile, then yes, I think the approach you're talking about is exactly what's needed. But people like that are maybe 10 or 15 percent of the population. Everyone else needs... Usability. Usability, yes. So, let's put it this way. On the market today, probably, nothing beats this kind of all-in-one system. Something you can set up. Match to your interior. Hide the wires so they're not visible. And everything we have standing behind us, uh -huh. or, you know, move a small part of it um, somewhere far away into a cabinet. So you'll only have two pretty stylish speakers standing there uh, in what I think is a very interesting design. It looks awesome, I agree. It does look awesome, yeah. And they can play the way you just heard. So, you know, there are just uh, no competitors for this. Basically, I never bring anything to an exhibition that I have doubts about, or, uh, for example, something that could affect my reputation. Here, I kind of boldly went for, let's say, minimal audio, but at such a high level, we it tried to make the most of it, we tried to get everything possible out of this system. I think we succeeded. Were you there? No. You weren't, right? In St. Petersburg, this system was installed using original cables. Uh-huh. It started to play more or less decently, only by the third day. Well, here, what we achieved is just night and day. Compared to that, let's put it this way. This is just one of the options of what we can do. Honestly, it really impressed me. Again, I went through all the rooms at the exhibition, uh, and to be honest, in probably about 50% uh, of them, there was no sound stage at all. I mean, according to the classic rules, everything should be clearly separated. The vocalist should be in the center if it's, uh, well, practically any song. All the instruments should be suspended in space. Plus, here the speakers are set about a uh, little over a meter away from the window. And the sound stage is deep, mm. but not everyone achieves that. That's the signature touch of our cable setup. In other words... Cables do that? Yes, it's the cables that do that. So the speakers completely disappear and the space itself plays. If you walked around the exhibition, our cable setup is on the minus first floor in the Krotitsky Hall with, um, with Moon. Uh -huh. Take a look there, it's the same thing. What kind of cable do you have? Show me. Uh, let's... Well, let's start. So, the power comes from the outlet. Okay. Here is the uninterruptible power supply, which we always use at exhibitions, three kilowatts. So we're not dependent on the hotel. We always have our own power supply. 230 volts. Doesn't it kill your dynamics? No. I do it so it doesn't get eaten. That is, you must always have twice the power reserve. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Well, did you hear the bass? The bass? Did it get killed? Honestly, I'll tell you honestly, the bass uh, was magnificent in the Shoda. Uh, just amazing. In your test tracks, it even uh, surprised me a little. Uh-huh. Ramstein, the bass isn't perfect. Honestly, it's not perfect, but it's good. I was able to achieve the same uh, on the calves. If we start using monoblocks like on the Bowers, the bass was better. 
but here I also think that maybe... It's a commercial product. Yes. We shouldn't forget that this is a truly versatile speaker system that plays absolutely everything. But still, it's cool, you know? Yeah, it plays. There's a wow effect. Makes you dance. Yeah. It's hard to get that kind of effect. Let's say, uh, from a home audiophile system. There, you're just listening, but here, it's like, uh, these are fire starters. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'll also uh, say that uh, in your setup, it played really well as a whole. All these nuances are brought together to the maximum. More, there are no rough edges. It's a very cohesive system. Yeah. But can you tell us why? Let me explain why. So, after uh, the uninterruptible power supply, there's an isolation transformer. It's made by Richard Gray, also an American company with a 97-year history. It's rated at two and a half kilowatts. All four windings are isolated from each other. Accordingly, the speakers are powered through it, also with our cable. I see. So, it's precisely thanks to this cable installed here that we get this kind of signal energy, plus the correct tonal balance. And that accurate soundstage, panorama you heard, that's a special feature. The soundstage is gorgeous. Whether it's from digital systems or not, it doesn't matter. So after that, it really depends a lot on uh, the Ethernet cable. Almost no one believes in it. They shouldn't be so skeptical. Uh huh. Even the direction of the cable matters, just so you have the full picture. As for the transformer, one of the lines goes to a Ferrotech power strip, but it's been completely modified inside. We use it as a simple filter to connect all this digital stuff to it. Here we have a Meridian 218 streamer which is basically uh, the top of their line. Next, there's an uh, audio file grade switch with galvanic isolation and a clock. Here is our Ruby clock with battery power. Unfortunately, the battery didn't last until the evening and is now charging. And a Schumann generator. And a Schumann generator. Oh, some people don't get it, while others can't live without it. In Japan, not a single spa salon goes without this thing. It's absolutely mandatory. <laughs> just so you understand, it's not just some nonsense or for no reason. People, they get it. Are your cables special too or not? Cables special. Do they make a difference? This is a rune server, custom made. Uh-huh. Absolutely, everything makes a difference. Basically, I could well, take any of these things. Everything here is selected so it sounds this way. If I remove any one of them or swap it for another, the sound will change. That goes for this cable, the internet cable, even this little piece. It doesn't matter which one. Take away any item and everything changes. I'm not saying it falls apart or stops playing. It just gets worse. It gets worse. It becomes harsher. Yes. And this is the same approach. With all systems, including analog and digital home systems, with a bunch of uh, mono blocks and everything else. It's the same thing. Until you go through this process, you won't get a good result. All right. So we've put these things on the speakers. Tell us about them. This is an interesting thing. Uh, this was invented by a guy from Yekaterinburg, just like us. He currently holds four patents. It's a silicone decoupler for the speaker. Well, on a flat surface it sits like this. And for a rounded one, it has feet that can be screwed on here. So... I can't even put it on my speakers. We'll secure it. That's not a problem. There's an option. So, what is this exactly? It's a device that converts the vibration created by the speakers themselves at, at a certain volume. The reflected signal hits the cabinet again, causing it to vibrate. This thing converts those vibrations into heat inside. So if you shake it, there's a pendulum inside a viscous medium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. How does it work? It feels like the low frequency noise, especially, has been removed from the sound and you start to hear things you hadn't heard before because they were masked and all of this opens up. The bass becomes denser, more solid, more fundamental. The mid-range and highs open up, and you start to notice nuances that simply weren't there before. And overall, the higher the class of the system, the greater the effect these things have. How much does one of these cost? This one costs 85,000 rubles, I think. And this one is 60, oh, if I remember correctly. I believe in these things. I have both Nordost and Talog myself, and... Misha regularly organizes demonstrations for us, with and without them. So you can really just listen and hear how it works. It definitely works. You have some serious cables. You could put a couple more of these on and... And they go to ground. Right. Tell us why they should be in the system. Our cable is very different um, from anything that other well-known brands offer. 
At least, no, carbon. That's more like, that's all accessories. But when it comes to the things that the cable is terminated with, people ask me, why do you have different plugs everywhere? Because that's also a tool for achieving different sound timbres. I mean, of course, you could make three identical cables, put on some nice, attractive plugs, and then it would work in one out of 30 systems. Mine work in nine out of 10 systems. And what's inside? Please tell us. That's something I'd rather not talk about because... Well, is it copper? Silver? Gold? It's copper. It's a... Um, seven nines? A single crystal? Monocrystal, of course. It's made at a single factory in the world, owned by Americans, located in Taiwan. Officially, you can't buy anything there. I know that, yes, the most high-tech factory is in Taiwan, probably that one, right? Yes, that's right. Well, it turns out you can get it out of there in all sorts of different ways. So, this is the best material available in the world today, for making cables. As for silver, gold, and all the other variations, I would say I don't exactly feel skeptical, but rather indifferent. I sometimes use them, but rarely, and only for custom cables, because a cable made from this base material is genuine, honest, and with it, you can achieve the real sound the way it's supposed to be. How do I know this? I'm an experienced car audio judge, just like my partner. I know what I'm talking about. Even though the rules there are kind of vague, they still uh, exist. Sound pressure and so on. No, not sound pressure. We actually judge specifically on sound quality. Exactly. And that gives you a certain kind of schooling, a lot of experience listening to, a huge number of setups, and a proper understanding. I mean, I don't have a sound engineering degree, but nevertheless, this allows me, within certain limits, to achieve a sound uh, that is harmonious, balanced, and that everyone likes. That's how I would put it. There are these cables called Skograd cable. I don't know. Have you heard? No, I haven't. They're also very expensive. They come in special cases and are also made from special copper. They don't use any silver in them. Compared to those, my cables cost practically nothing. How much for one like that? A cable like this costs 600,000 rubles. 600,000. So you can only really compare it to those famous brands that start uh, at about one and a half million uh -huh. and go up from there. Well, you have to listen, it's interesting. Well, in this system, yes, as a cable. And uh, in others too. But for now, I'm not bragging that I have the best cable out there. But uh, experience shows that name. so far I've managed to make something much more interesting than everything else. Well, do you do any measurements right now? To be honest, no. That was actually the main condition under which I got into this. Even though I have a full education that allows me to deal with all sorts of physical things, I just set physics aside and started from scratch, conducting a huge number of experiments with other things non-physical things. With constructions? With constructions, yes. I honestly don't care what the capacitance is or what the inductance is. You heard the result today, that's what matters. Do you like it? Yeah, it's good. No questions. What difference does it make what its inductance is? Agreed. Honestly, I take the same approach. Because obviously, you can measure everything, almost everything. But, you know, for example, that those who professionally tune grand pianos on your violins... Yes, yes. They do it by ear. There is a machine for pianos that tunes by the first octave, but still, the very top professionals, of course, do everything by ear. Let me share a little secret with you. The systems we tune and build, if you set up grand pianos and invite a professional musician and play a recording, they'll be able to tell by ear when, which piano is playing. Steinway, Yamaha. Of course, Stanley, Sonus, right? Yes. Yes, yes. But try to do that on any audio system, you won't be able to. Interesting, very interesting. Well, I see your room is prepared. Well, at least... Minimally. And to the maximum extent possible in this hotel. For the most part, yes. Isolators, uh, cables, uh, stabilizers. There is even a special network thing. So the approach here is without a doubt uncompromising. and. It's only in this way that you can achieve the highest quality audio. Thank you very much. All of this doesn't cost a crazy amount of money. Well, it's not cheap. Well, everything is relative. If you try to do the same thing with branded equipment, then you'll really know what cheap and not cheap mean. Let me put it this way. I, I listened to Focal for four or five million. Diva Utopia, the active ones.
I like them less than your system, but they're also cheaper here, so... We can work with Focal too. Well, you could easily put things like this on them. It's comprehensive. Well, I agree, I agree. Seven minutes. Any equipment can be made to perform at 99% uh, of its potential. And that's a completely different sound. But you need to understand what you're doing, you know? And if you run into any problems, you need to know how to solve them, to know what needs to be done. So, for example, what would you put in my system? But I haven't seen your system. I'm inviting you over, and I'll tell you then. Well, just off the top of my head, I have Bauer's 802 D Force 2 600 watt monoblocks, a preamp. What kind of monoblocks? Bryston 7B cube. Bryston? Not modified? No. Original? Original. Nothing has been modified? Nothing has been modified. The preamp is Bryston. The DC is Bryston. And the source is Bryston as well. And of course, all the cables everywhere are in place. A power distributor too. I'll tell you, your sound is going to be dry, academic, kind of, well, a bit lifeless. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's very powerful, assertive and precise. Yeah, yeah. There's no life in it, but there is drive. And with that drive, you kind of try to get the harmonious information for yourself that you feel is missing. Well, overall, I'm satisfied with everything. The only thing is, I think, first of all, your devices will definitely work. I have all the isolation, both Tauk and Nordost, all the titanium TCs are installed. Honestly, I'm missing the feet, the Gaia feet. At least, uh, if uh, we're talking about the entry-level ones. You don't even realize yet what you're missing. If you really want to go deeper and fully understand what you have. I'll be inviting you. Invite us over. We'll get ready, come over, and you'll be extremely surprised. Thank you. Live and learn. That's why I'm always open to discovering new horizons. Thank you very much. It was really interesting. Truly, it's an awesome room.